gameplay has been a topic of contention in the Star Citizen community for some time, and for good reason. But with many foundational steps falling into place, development on these systems is progressing as well. Today I'm going to give you the very first detailed look at what long distance probing and exploration gameplay could look like, and how you can explore the galaxy. When it's actually built. Thank you for coming to My Tomato Talk. And thanks to my newest Patreon supporters Justin Yim, Shane Eisbet, James Knapp, Toil Escobar, Niku, Simon B, and Jin. that show. That's where this is from. But anyways, that clip's going to make a lot more sense in a little bit. The general idea of understanding what you're looking at and that it might not be everything you think it is is going to be very central theme of scanning and long distance probing in Star Citizen. And admittedly, many of the game mechanics that are coming to the game are still being planned, but they are dependent on two very important things, choice and skill. One of these pillars is apparent in ship selection, mining equipment builds, armor choice, and even something as simple as navigating around the star system. Professions will only build on this idea, and exploration appears to be one that does not shy away. Before I go any further, I will say that this method of gameplay is still in the design phase, so it could be tweaked a little bit here and there before we see it release, but this first look will give us enough detail to get a general idea of how it's going to play out. So let's go back to the clip from the beginning. There's a great deal of mystery when you're trying to determine an object by cross-section, but even when using infrared or electromagnetic readings, things can still be iffy. As an explorer, it will be crucial for you to understand these signatures when you see them. Your skill and experience will allow you to identify and acknowledge what it is on your scopes, though you will have help. For the less skilled explorers, a storable library of signatures that you have collected over time and could likely purchase from players and NPCs should always be available for you to compare your current project against. These will be stored in server banks and computers on your ships. Creating a lower baseline for beginner exploration versus the very advanced players. Now that's a really cool detail, but how's the probing going to work? Well, let's say that you just entered a brand new star system. We'll call it Flavortown. And in this star system, you want to get a lay of the space, in a general sense. You could choose to be more stealthy about it, staying localized with your probing, or you could capture a wide swath of space that's much less detailed. Keep in mind here, you will have the options of different probes depending on how and what you are looking for. Our exploration vessel has deployed some probes out across the system. This is not an immediate process, as everything in Star Citizen is a balance of time versus investment. While our ship has the faster quantum drive, which could take us to the other side of the system much more quickly, this is safer for us, but it takes longer. And we also have to consider that these probes are going to have their own amounts of fuel as well, so you can't just be sending them out willy-nilly. Once the probes have arrived, we can start the pinging process. Again, the amount of information that you get from these pings is based on the range that you set them to and the time that you allowed your probe to collect data. So you could be sitting out there for 5 minutes, you could be sitting out there for half an hour. This again takes advantage of one of our pillars, choice. While you could get just enough information to determine that there is a massive deposit of Laronite in a distant asteroid field, that could take an extra 20 minutes for the information to be recorded and sent back to you. But maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe you're willing to send the information for less money. In this case, you can recall your probe and bug out with basic info of some sort of major deposit out there in space. Or you could create a quantum beacon for you or your party in order to be able to jump to this location and get more information. And at times, it seems you won't be able to get all the information you need from a single probe you will likely need to regularly relocate your probes as you triangulate the position of the object that you've found. Okay. 
Though the details surrounding how this information is stored or even displayed are slim, the notion of a highly skill-based scanning system is very enticing. And the ability for players to be able to build up a library of the signatures that they recognize and refer to those later, well, that's awesome. This is a system very much based on uncertainty, and a rather significant amount of time chipping away at that uncertainty. And combined with the other aspects of Star Citizen, long-range scanners begin to look very valuable. While you could choose to go with the explorer who gets you information fast at a low cost, you may find that their targets aren't always what they think they are based on the signatures they received. I don't know exactly how CIG will do this, but this will reflect on players' reputation, possibly encouraging people to go towards different sources of information when some might fall a little flat. And while cargo and transportation is the backbone of the economy, exploration will be the spearhead. Discovery itself will drive forward many activities from dynamic events to org operations to gold rushes, as the primary use case for exploration is to find the resources for everybody else. But there will be many discoveries made possible in the game, from pirate bases of operations to jump points leading to different systems. These are exciting possibilities, and many who know me know this is what I want to spend a lot of my time doing. However, as I stated before, the gameplay is still in the design phase, and is likely at least 9 months out, hopefully coming in April of 2021. As this is a first look at this feature, it obviously brings up a lot of questions. What will these probes look like? How will we launch them from ships? How long will they take to get to and from their destination? And how long will it take to transmit the data to us? How will that data even be displayed? And can other ships track these probes? Of course, if you're like me, you have dozens of other questions like this, and unfortunately we will have to wait a bit longer to see, but I think we can expect to get more information and possibly a look at the early work surrounding this feature this year. And if you don't want to miss that update, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my other Star Citizen videos. I aim to be one of your top spots for exploration-based gameplay as we move forward, and I also have an org, the Garden Interstellar Initiative, which has a science division with teams dedicated completely to scanning and long-distance probing. So if you're into that, maybe check it out. And if you would like to continue to support this information, entertainment, and deep dives into features, you can sign up on Patreon for as low as a dollar a month and get perks like early videos, sit-ins on my podcast recordings, and other things. And don't forget to check out my giveaway which I'm doing at the end of the year where you can win a Starlifter, a Cutlass Black, or a Mustang Alpha, all with Star Citizen included. There's no code in this video, but I am releasing codes all throughout my social media to give you extra entries into that giveaway, so keep your eyes peeled. And I'd like to see your comments down below on what you think of this feature, how you think it could be improved, what you would like to see, and if you're excited for it. There's a possibility that the EU Persistent Universe Features team is watching this video and will see your feedback so make sure to chime in down below. Again, thank you for watching this video, and I'll catch you later. And thanks to my top supporters TK, Valiant15, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Falcus Vipus, Dossek, Guilty Conscious, Extreme Tuber 7, El Gordo, Stuart Granger, Niku, and Jin.